All right, so um, I know that I have a different method of teaching. My courses focus differently because it's really a different part of your brain that's being stimulated. So it's often confusing to students, especially at the beginning. And so I'm gonna take this time, but this is not a required class. This is just office hours because it's a holiday and it's a chance for students to get their questions answered. I will also have office hours at approximately the same time tomorrow, but a little bit later tomorrow, um, starting at maybe 1030 in the morning, your time. Okay. All right. So let me go to the screen share. And what I asked you to do on the Google Classroom was to have a post for every class. So I'm giving you an example of what a good post and a bad post would be. If you remember on the stream, what I said was for each class, you read the material and then you post the questions you have the comments you make, the things that you want to be brought up in the class so that by the end of the class, your inquiries are satisfied, right? So the post starts out with your reactions, not notes, not what did it say. You can keep your notes somewhere else for the post it's what are your reactions to what's being said? What, what do you want to talk about? Then during the class, we will have, I will talk on the material. I will weave the class together. So probably I'm going to repeat myself because most likely at the end of each class, I will say something like, today we did lock. Next time we're going to do Kant. Kant is radically different from lock in their view of reason. Okay, so I'll talk about that for a little while. And then at the beginning of the next class, I'll say, okay, yesterday we did, or at the last class, we did lock. Locke had this view of reason. Today we're doing Kant. Kant has this view. So I do repeat myself, but I do it because I think the material is difficult and you do need me, I think, to weave the material together so that you can get this overall story. So the story I want to tell is for you to understand what's right in front of your face. So there's a climate, you know, a huge climate event going on in what Bangladesh and India today, right? Somebody's electricity is down. We all know that there are more climate events and more serious climate events than there have been. People in developing countries do not question climate change. However, the United States has the most climate scientists. It has the most um, premier national um, science institute, the Center for Disease Control. The, they have huge bureaucracies filled with scientists, Environmental Protection Agency. They have tons of information, and yet they have the most people denying climate change. They have a president, they have a party. There's a political party where you, you must 
deny climate change to get elected or to get re-elected. Okay, why, right? Why is the country that's led the way in science, technology, computers, is also the country that continues to exploit, that, that has politicians that deny. How did this happen? So I think the, I guess for me, part of liberal arts is to understand why studying history is important to explain where you are. And also, how are we gonna move forward? Because part of the reason we have trouble moving forward is we still have that mindset that's coming from the West and particularly America. It's a mindset. And a philosopher um, is committed to the idea and to communicating to people that our ideas are what govern human culture, okay? Somebody, your, people's parents have some idea about good and evil and they condition their children to conform to that idea. And they can really mess the kids up biologically because our ideas can really be at odds with our physical, um, uh, with our bodies. So the power of ideas is what I want to get across. And also the power of ideas that led to the exploitation of nature for human well being. But the same ideas now are destroying the natural world and destroying human beings and forever. So, I, so the first section of this class, the first um, five day, five weeks, whatever, is what happened during the Western Enlightenment when science, industry, technology, and then that's always developing computers, the philosophies behind what was going on. And there were different worldviews. And we're gonna study four different ones, Locke, dualism of Immanuel Kant, the empiricism of the utilitarians, Bentham and Mill, and Karl Marx. So we're gonna study those four they disagreed with each other on a lot of things, on culture, on virtue, justice, truth, whatever, but they all agreed on the exploitation of nature forever for human well being. And this is why it is so difficult. Plus, if you're coming from a developing country, this is why. <laughs> The developed countries keep coming in and they keep following their same mindset and they keep exploiting you and they keep having all these wonderful reasons. They don't, they don't think we are evil and proud of it. They don't. They have all these wonderful reasons based on God's will and virtue. I mean, I think you need to read it. Because another lesson from studying history and studying yourself is that people believe they're doing good when they're actually doing evil, but they don't call it evil. They call it good or they call it necessary or they call it, you know, the best possible. They always have some reason for what they do, but it's pretty serious that they can be so mistaken. So the first section of the course is about the Western Enlightenment. The second section of the course looks at the religious traditions, what are called religious traditions, or I prefer to call them wisdom traditions, right? So ancient traditions that value wisdom. 
And we're going to study, Aristotle was one of them, but we studied him the first day. And his is a biological view. But then we study Christianity, Islam, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, Confucianism, Paganism, and secular humanism. And so um, students are, I want students to just explore their psyches, right? What were you raised to think? Which tradition, what did your family belong to or your society? Do you agree with that tradition's view of the environment, what we read, what I assigned? I will also ask you to find your own article, right? It, with whatever you identify with, you go explore it because you're exploring yourself. Um, all right, so you sort that out in the second section. Um, the other issue is that the way that the religious leaders of those traditions lived, Jesus, Confucius, Buddha, Muhammad, a Hindu guru, can be very, very different from when a religion becomes institutionalized and it gets rich and powerful and the religious leaders uh, are more concerned with power or money than with following the values of the original uh, person that led to the formation of that tradition. So that happens or that can happen in any tradition. So I want you to become critical thinkers of whatever you were raised with. Whatever you were raised with, you have to re-examine uh, habits and customs. And again, for your own sake, because you're going into a very different world and you know it, uh, I think you should sort it out in your mind, right? What ideas, what worldview do you wanna carry with you moving forward? And then the third section of the class is very specific issues, biodiversity, the tragedy, the commons, uh, overpopulation, vegetarianism, just really specific issues. And then you do a research paper that links some problem, preferably in your country, and you do a little more digging on that. And then the final paper is environmental ethic. You formulate your own ethic. Okay, I, I know I said that last time, but let's go with the posts, right? Actually, these are not weekly essays for this class. They're daily essays because the class um, has just about a whole week um, per day. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm just going to describe what would make a D a C, a B, or an A. So that when you get your grade, um, I, you know, it's hard. It's not like it's cut and dried. If the question is two plus two is what? You get four, you get a hundred, you get five, you get zero. It's not like that because I want students to react to the material with their own mind. I want every post to be different, every student to be different. So how do I grade them? Well, I grade them on the sophistication of their thinking um, and the complexity of their thinking, as well as to some extent your English, right? In general, AUW students are really good at English. Some are not, but in general, it's, you know, it's great. It makes teaching a lot easier. So a D entry would be, okay, today we read, I'll just take it for um, the assignment for today. Today we read Bacon and Locke. Uh, Locke, Bacon thought knowledge was power. The purpose of knowledge is to, of nature is to exploit nature. That's the whole point of knowing is power. Uh, John Locke um, believed that people have natural rights and we all have a right to work up the land, to cut down the trees, to, to plant crops, to give it value. And everybody who doesn't do that is lazy and irrational. 
So it's rational to exploit nature and it's virtue and it's what God wants. Okay. All right. Then that's just pure description. It's just a summary of what you read. The other people, yeah, and then in your post you say, okay, the people in my small group said that um, Bacon also talked about the idols of the tribe and the idols of the cave. All right. Or John Locke also talked about political power. All right. That's just a description. You didn't have to have any thinking. You could just describe it. Um, and if you're less than the required number of words and the required number is going to get bigger over time. Um, there's no reflective consciousness that for that. That's again, why a lot of you get confused about my class, because I think a number of classes, I don't think they're that simplistic, but they're more like that than my classes. So, okay. Then the second one, it, it does have the required number of words and you're maybe saying what your reactions were right? I didn't like Bacon's view. And then why? You know, I was surprised by it. Or yeah, I that must be what's behind the West now that I think about it. Um, uh, how did what you read compare with, with what you were raised to think about environmental issues? So were you raised to think that the purpose of knowledge of nature is to exploit it? Or were you raised to think that the purpose of scientific knowledge is to become sustainable? Or did it just never come up, right? Um, how did the other people in the class react? And then what are you learning about the mindset of the other people in the class? Right, that's a more thoughtful reaction. Um, like uh, Shazneen had a really good insight because she said she linked this to um, something going on in Sri Lanka, and I and that was it was interesting to me because I didn't know about Sri Lanka, but also i really respect the fact that she could read that and then think of something her political leader said and put two and two together right that is a more sophisticated entry right okay then the next one is that um the, the this one is more like comparing and contrasting then the next one is um you start thinking about why you think the way you do, and you sort of try to find some natural foundation for virtue or for moving forward. So it's something like in the class discussion and in the lectures, I can see there are basic patterns. Like no matter where we grew up, we had these issues about uh, how to live, or Rossi, for example, the villagers, they are going through this syndrome related to climate change. They, they got higher yield rice, but then that takes more land. I can't remember exactly how that worked, but then you have to cut down trees and then there's runoff and then there's erosion. And, and so, um, so Rossi, Rossi's particular place has that particular kind of um, problem and the way the villagers think about it is that they're sort of fatalistic. Whereas over here, that's one way to respond is just be fatalistic. Then there's an, I, I'm not quite sure that's fair, Rossi, I can't, but something like that. And then, but somebody else over here um, has another philosophical understanding of what goes on, right? So that goes a little bit deeper. And then the next one is that you start to link what you're learning in this class with other classes also. So you can link what you're learning 
to your background, to your culture, to what the other students are saying both about their culture and about their reflections on their culture. And then you can also link it to other classes that you're taking. So a number of you are in public health, a number of you are in computers or whatever you're in. Some of you are in PPE, some of you economics, but you just start linking it to um, your other classes. And that, that would be the A paper, right? The more you weave things together, the more you combine not just a description of what it said, but reflections about it, reactions about it, noticing the impact, noticing how that all the disciplines fit together or don't fit together. You should also need to notice how education in a lot of ways is propaganda. Every, you, you know, you take a class, psychology, you don't think you're being indoctrinated, but to some extent you are. It's a, usually a very Western view of psychology. I don't even agree with the dominant view in the West. And I know that a lot of people in the West make a whole lot of money from having that view. So um, learning how to think critically about all this stuff and learning how to look at your education as a kind of mind control, right? Actually, when I look at the um, curriculum at AUW, it is so amazing because the curriculum at Lyon College is so different. And you can, it's just jaw dropping because it really helps you realize how there's an agenda in the back of every institution has a mission, even though the mission of Lyon and AUW on paper looks very similar. The content of what you're taught is really different. Um, so now I'm going to stop for a minute and ask for questions. So every day you have three reactions and I will be more specific on the stream. Okay. But it's something like three reactions before class, three reactions after class about what took place during the class, and then your final takeaway from that class about what you might want to use for your final environmental ethic, um, or what you definitely want to include because you think John Locke really messed things up, <laughs> or you think it's understandable why Locke thought that, because he was reacting against the privilege of the time. But now we have a whole new uh, layer, a whole new class of privileged wealthy people who make their wealth on fossil fuels. And so what Locke was trying to solve, a problem he was trying to solve, has in turn, his view has created the same problem with the very language that was used to solve a previous problem. Um, anyway, that, that would be one possible reflection. Um, but you've got to have some takeaway that relates to your final environmental ethic. Now I will stop for questions. And I will post this, okay? Dr. Beck, I do have a few questions. One is regarding Monday's first post. I know it says optional. And um, so those who didn't attend Monday's class, um, if we didn't do post number one, how many, like, how many overall posts do we need to send to you? during this semester. Okay. In the syllabus, it says 14. Okay. Um, and I, I, that's a relevant question because there are something like 18 class days, except this class misses three days. So 
But I guess what I can do is just require you to have 14 posts. And if you want to come, if you wanted to come to class today, that's fine. Um, you can always listen to the YouTube video, however. And so it's 14 posts. Does that answer your question? Yes, and one more question is regarding today's class. Um, usually we have like reactions of what like our classmates says, but since today is not like actually class class to discuss about like the whole material breath for the post, should we just write about the readings that we did and like a reflection of it? Um, or do you want us write a reaction well, of what you What I could do is that the students who really want to do a post for today, right? Because not all of you are from Bangladesh. Um, we will do breakout rooms for anybody who's who wants to, to do that. Does that make sense, Rossi? Yes. And that'll be the second recording. I'll just, uh, I'll record this and then I'll say, okay, that's the end of the discussion about the process of the class. And um, now I'm going to shut this recording down and for anybody who actually wants to make this one of their classes and do a post now, then I'll make another recording where I'll have breakout rooms and then the students will record in. Or if there aren't that many students who want to do that, we won't have breakout rooms. We'll just take turns reacting. Um, this is just to give the students who want to start getting going on the class, you know, because the, the workload is going to get heavier later on. Uh, just the opportunity to do that. That's all. Is that all right with you, Rossi? Yes, Professor. Um, any other questions? And I will attach that to the um, stream. On the stream, I will explain, there's many, many students who really are on my class list who are not here. So um, what I'll do is I'll also tell them that if you want to listen to the second recording and just write a post that reacts to what the students had said, that's OK. I'll just do that. Professor, uh, like where do we have to write the post? It's on the Google Classroom. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK. I It asks me to make an assignment. And then on the stream, it has this announcement that an assignment has been made. Um, then do you guys go to? Um, go to the top and it says assignments or something? Or you just click on that place where it says it has been made? Uh, yes, yes, Professor. professor. We yes. Get the okay. notifications and it leads us directly to your assignment and it has a submit button. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm sorry that the other professors don't do this. I think it's great. It just makes it so much easier. I just sit and comment on the papers. I give them a number, grade. The students get the number right away. It's all put together. I can add up the grade, get the grades in. Um, you can, I think you can look at your grades over time. So that's why I do it. I, I don't know what other professors do, but I do like it. Oh, Foreman, do you have a question? No, Professor Richelieu, I joined the from. Uh, <laughs> that's why it was the from the beginning. OK, that's fine. I, any sort of thing about technology that um, 
All right, here we go. Here's the next one. The next one is that I wrote a long outline because the first, on the syllabus, it has course objectives and it talks, it's very generic, uh, critical thinking, inquiry, reading, communication. All right, fine, I filled that out. But really, I wanted to explain to you in an email, in a verbal, I mean, on paper, why I teach the class and my objectives about what I hope you learn, because I think you'll gain from it in terms of learning how to cope with the world that you're moving into um, and developing a worldview that's going to help you, you know, understand why these things are happening, what you want to do moving forward, how to communicate with other people, how to understand other people. So I just explain it in my own words. Um, because in general, the academic, uh, you know, process has become very atomized and very, in, you know, just this data point and this data point. So I, I like essays. I like always weaving things together. So that's what I am, have done here. And it's pretty much, you know, what I just said. And then, um, a little further down, starting with number two here, is when I get into the content of what we're reading for today. So I will wait on that uh, and do that in the next recording. Um, let me see, any other questions on the process of the class? Ah, when are the, when are the posts due? Is that the question? Um, okay. All right. So, um, so Nitu didn't have access to the materials because I thought she was just going to be deciding, but I will definitely send that. I, you know, I have a little note here with your name on. So it wasn't that I wasn't aware of it. Um, let's see. Okay. So Naziva, did I answer your questions? No, Professor. What? No, Professor. No, or I can't. No. Oh, you said, you said yes, okay. But that is, a lot of people have the question that Nasifa has. What are we supposed to write, right? I understand that. And I, I really wanna take a moment here to make sure everybody honestly thinks it's okay because they're too afraid to say, I don't get it. Uh, if you don't get it, there's three other people that feel the same way. So um, let's see. When is the date, due date? That's a good question. Three days after the each class. So. For a Monday, it's Thursday. For a Tuesday, a Sunday, sorry. Okay, the days are so messed up. For me, it's Saturday. For you, it's Sunday. You know, I'm not used to teaching on Sunday. I don't mind it. I just keep forgetting. So if you have a class Sunday, it's Wednesday. Monday, it's Thursday, like that. And the reason I do that is so you don't get too far behind. Now. I will not penalize you. So I'm not going to make you, you know, feel like, oh my gosh, I got to get this done or I'm going to get a lower grade. No, because you got enough to do. Um, but probably after, I just want you to do it for your own sake. Because if you start getting behind, it's really hard to catch up. Um, so for example, if you, this is a Wednesday class, right? So at least by the next Wednesday, you really need to have gotten caught up or you're gonna lose it. 
Um, but again, I don't like grading people down just because I know what a lot of the students are up against. Um, any other questions? So, all right, so I will stop this recording and then I will um, open it up. Uh, then I'll just, we'll still be here and I'll start another recording.